Are you ready to order, gentlemen? Uh, yes. Could I have the sesame and ginger oven roast and the sweet pepper sauce? And for you, sir? Just the steak, thanks. Medium rare. Thank you, sir. Listen, I'm sorry about the view, Dr. Banner. I just hope watching them rebuild Chessie Piers doesn't bring the whole Hulk thing back for you. The Hulk? <laughs> Believe it or not, I hardly give the Hulk a second thought these days, General Fury. Well, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not entirely sure you're ready to come back yet, son. Oh no. Believe me, sir. I really am 100% again. They've got me on three blood tests a day at the moment, and there hasn't been a trace of any Hulk cells in my system for almost 12 entire weeks. What about you? How are you enjoying the new job? Doesn't being in charge of world security get a little daunting? Man, taking this position was like volunteering for a career as a paranoid schizophrenic. But the money's good, and the girls are pretty. And being in charge allows me to smile favorably on all those underfunded side projects. Such as? What would you say if I told you that the president just authorized a $150 billion cash injection into your plans for a new Captain America, Doctor? Are you serious about this? George Jr. is talking five state-sponsored super people to begin with, and I figure we need someone up there with a flag on his chest more than ever right now. This is unbelievable. Downsizing conventional numbers and reinvesting in a small, superhuman unit for 21st century problems. I don't know what to say, sir. Well, don't start nibbling on my ear just yet, my friend. Because all of your recent health problems mean that 12-digit budget comes with a very specific condition. Which is? We're demoting you to number two. Am I losing my mind here, or are insects helping with the removal, Jason? I'm sorry, Mrs. Pym, but I'm afraid that's classified information. You'll have to ask your husband if you want details about the ants. Ants? Yeah, what do you think, Jan? Aren't they incredible? I've got two and a half million of them clearing out the lab and another 50,000 keeping everyone in hot drinks. It's a new form of military communication I've been working on using these pheromones instead of radio waves to issue instructions under enemy radar. I don't know if it's all the electrical storms we've been having lately, or just the fact that they're moving us out of this dump. But the ideas for super people are coming in to me faster than I can type these days, Jan. This giant man formula is practically writing itself. I just wish that sweaty little Banner guy wasn't coming back to spoil everything. Oh, don't worry about him, honey. Fury's keeping Banner busy on the other side of this complex with Captain America serum he's been trying to crack for years. The only time you'll even see the guy is Christmas parties and presidential visits. Oh, I'm not scared he's going to step on your toes or anything. It's just those rumors about where his funding was coming from during the departmental lean years. Do you really think he was involved in those secret superhuman trials on civilians? You know, like what's-his-name was saying at breakfast the other day. Who knows? Nobody at S.H.I.E.L.D. has a spotless record, but I think Fury has been serious when he said he wanted to drag us out of the shadows. This superhero thing is supposed to be getting the biggest public relations push in human history, and the fact that Tony Stark's involved can only be a good sign, right? Tony Stark? Didn't you get the email? Apparently the Mr. Clean of the Fortune 500 came down from a mountain and told Nick Fury he could have Iron Man for his new team. Does he always show off like this when he takes new suits out for us, then? Absolutely, General Fury. Sometimes I don't think Tony considers a test run complete until he's waved at every office girl in the city. Oh, don't believe a word of it, Nick. As our dear Mr. Colton is perfectly aware, I only stopped waving the really pretty ones. Oh, here we go again. Overcompensating a little, aren't we, Master Tony? You know what they say about bachelor boys who feel a constant compulsion to remind us what insatiable ladies men they are. <laughs> oh, shut up and stop giving me the creeps, Jarvis. You're supposed to be the perfect English butler, for God's sake. What happened to those vodkas and orange I asked for? Vodka and orange? It's 10 a.m., Tony. <laughs> Not in Moscow, old boy. Cheers, by the way. Okay, let's review this lineup S.H.I.E.L.D. is talking about. There's me, Pim, that poor little wife he shrunk, and whatever Marine we end up with once Banner cracks the Captain America formula, correct? That's about the size of it, Tony. Couldn't we just lose Banner? I find it hard to put my trust in someone who turned into a green Goliath and trashed Bridget Fonda's favorite New York nightclub. Out of the question, Daddy-o. 
What about that Thor guy over in Europe? He's wonderfully charismatic. But still not answering his mobile. Have you tried talking to the Fantastic Four? After all the negative press they've been getting from their neighbors lately, why do you think I'm not risking any mutants in the initial lineup? Is that why you were so keen to get me on board? Do I bring a little run and respectability to this party? Never made a secret of it, Tony. You're a trusted brand name in everything from software to diet soda. And of course, the new Iron Man armor you devised in the mountains doesn't exactly hurt your case, either. The only thing we're losing sleep over right now is why you changed your mind about sharing the Iron Man tech with my big, bad military industrial complex. In all seriousness, I guess I just hit a point in my life where I wondered what things could be like if all the billionaires and government spooks tried to save the world instead of bleeding it dry. Does that make any sense to you? More than you'll ever know, Monopoly Man. Nicholas Fury, I believe this just might be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Nice to meet you again, Dr. Banner. Would you like a hand with that luggage? It looks kinda heavy. No thank you, Mrs. Pym. I might not be the Hulk anymore, but I think I am capable of carrying a few books and a laptop. Suit yourself. So what do you think of the new facility? I know it's only half finished, but even this is a million times better than that rat hole in Pittsburgh. How you managed to work all those years in that place without going nuts, I'll never know. You mean turning green and going on a rampage through New York doesn't qualify as nuts? That was a joke, by the way, Mrs. Pym. Uh, yeah, good one. Oh, listen, I almost forgot. I couldn't believe it when Nick Fury told me you were engaged to Betty Ross. I can't believe Fury's hired her as our director of communications. To be honest... We haven't been a couple for quite some time, Mrs. Pym. Last time I saw her, she suggested she and I try a temporary relationship break for six months. Really? I can't imagine why. Hey, hey Bruce. Bruce. Sorry I couldn't meet you from the helicopter, but these workaholics have been prepping me for the giant man trials all morning. Yeah, right. Like we get to make any decisions around here. Good to see you back on your feet again, Dr. Banner. Let's, Let's hope, hope you're luckier than I was with Captain America, Dr. Pym. I suppose your biggest concern with something like this is that everything grows at the same speed, huh? Oh no, I've got the biology worked out to the tenth decimal point. I'm just worried if I'll be able to stop growing before I hit the critical 60 feet mark. Why? What's the significance of that? 60 feet is the exact height at which the human skeleton can no longer support its own body mass, Doctor. That big baby of mine is worried his thigh bones are going to snap, even though I've told him a million times that stopping will be an automatic reflex. Well. It's about time we put that pillow talk of ours to the test, sweetheart. Testing begins in T minus 10 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Clear the area, please. No sign of any physiological changes yet. Patience is a virtue, Jason. Give him time. Oh. My. God. Don't, Don't be scared, scared honey. honey. Just, Just remember that this is exactly what, what you want to have it. No. No, there's something wrong here, Jan. Everything is shrinking instead of me getting bigger. No, everything's fine, Hank. Hey. It's just your perception is changing. Jan! Jan, what's happening to the lights? Nothing to worry about, honey. Just a little technical glitch. Jan! Jan! Turn it inside out, Jan! Jan, stop the experiment! I'm turning it inside out! What are you waiting for, you numbskull? Hit the blasted lights! Gotcha, suckers. Hank Pym, I'm gonna kick your... 59 feet, 11 and a half inches. Way to go, Dr. Pym. Oh man, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much did that rock, Dr. Banner? Oh, 10, Jason. Definitely 10. <laughs> Yeehaw. How do you think I'm doing, General? Hank Pym is swaggering around and calling himself Giant Man. He's going to end up creating the whole blasted team if I don't crack this idiotic super soldier formula soon. Excuse me, General? I said, shut up and crack open that bottle of champagne that you've been saving for the last season of Star Trek, Dr. Banner. You're not going to believe what we just fished out of the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> 